one must know that what exactly the signal mean so the simple short answer can be signals carry information so whatever the kind of information is there in variety of forms it may be you can call it to be a signal and that you should be able to have represented with the mathematical tools we have learned so far and then whatever the methodologies of digital signal processing we have learned we can make them applied to that information what we have called as signal and then we can achieve our application with good efficiency so what is the objective of applying digital signal processing techniques that to preserve the information contained into the signal and also to extract and manipulate it whenever it is necessary so let us say if we take the example of two dimensional signal that we call to be image here so we have different kinds of images we can have binary image when the representation of signal information is in terms of 0 and 1 only we can have grayscale image we can have color image so for example if we talk about the grayscale image so as it is a two dimensional signal so we can have the representation of image into number of rows and number of columns and specific to a certain row and certain column we come to a location what we know to as a pixel into that image so let us have the total size of 512 pixels by 512 pixels and the representation as it is gray level type of the image is with the help of n bit here in this example we are considering 8 bit representation per pixel so this is containing 512 multiplied to the same dimension on other side that is why we represent square of 512 multiplied to 8 bits for every pixel so this multiplication is resulting into the figure we have 2097152 bits here so let us have the grayscale image visualization so let us see this is a flower in the grayscale visualization as you see the image plane to be of square type it means the number of rows is equal to number of columns here we have 512 by 512 and for every pixel location there are requirement of 8 bits so this is what the case now if we want to convey the information that we have pictureized into the grayscale form instead into the color form so what can be the scenario a color image for the same scenario for the same dimensions if we are representing we know that the color image will be a stack of three such image planes corresponding to red green and blue frequency bands here so that it will be rgb color image so now the requirement of how many bits we need for representation for storage and further communication of this particular image signal from transmitter to the receiver will be three times greater than that of the earlier representation here now here you see the colorful representation of the same scenario with the same dimensions 512 by 512 pixels and for every pixel we require 8 bits to represent and there it will be the individual band of red then green and then blue when they are stacked together we get this pictorial representation here now what is the next thing the next thing is that we require good efficiency for storage of the digital signals of this particular kind and it is often necessary to have compression of the data for saving the memory and this compression of data is into the smaller size that requires significantly fewer number of bits here a signal into the compressed form also requires less bandwidth for transmission as i have already discussed with you so in short signal compression is nothing but the reduction of the amount of the data along with preserving the information content of the signal with some acceptable fidelity so here we are talking about fidelity so whenever we have 
store this information with minimal number of bits and we want to reconstruct back the original representation for any application at hand we should be able to do it with the coded form or the stored form of that information here now practically how it is possible see the possibility of signal compression is because most of the signals are having a certain kind of data redundancy so what is data redundancy there is a certain kind of or certain amount of data that has no relevant information we are intended for so such type of data can be removed here so we can say that we can have reduction into the data redundancy and whatever the important things are only if they are taken into account we can have the signal compression possible so there are basically three types of data redundancies usually encountered into the practice those are coding redundancy then intersample redundancy and then the psycho visual redundancy here now at this point we are not going in much details of how these are the variety of the redundancies how the coding redundancy is different than the intersample and that of the psycho visual redundancy now in this video i will just give you the brief introduction how the signal compression can be done so for that purpose let us have the discussion with respect to a block schematic so here we have the block schematic so from this block schematic it must be clear to you people that the signal compression methodology can be separated into two major parts one is for encoding purpose another is for decoding purpose if you start with the original information to be compressed the signal to be compressed that it is represented as x that is fed as input to the encoded part where we have the sub blocks as represented energy compression so that will get x into the modified form as represented by y y is fed as input to further the quantizer that will give you the signal representation at intermediate stage by small q here and then the entropy coding is performed to result into the representation of d which is the binary bit stream and that it is the coded form here so i can say that the signal x is compressed and d is the compressed form representation of the original information here so this way we have achieved the signal compression and whenever there it is a requirement of regenerating the original information from the coded form so there should be good fidelity here good efficiency in short you can say so there it is a reverse procedure to the encoding that we have decoding in the below part here so first of all the bit stream in binary form that is coded one is fed as input to entropy decoding that is resulting into the signal as denoted by q cap here then there it is inverse quantization which results into y cap and finally the reconstruction of the information so practically most of the time it does not 100% match with the original information but it is most of the time similar to most percentage that is why here we represent it with the help of x cap here so in concern to the block schematic representation for the signal compression and decompression methodology i see here let us discuss few of the important formulae those are required first of all let us discuss with respect to the coding redundancy here the first type so let us assume that each sample of the discrete time signal in general if it is represented as x of n will be a random variable r sub x i taking one of capital q distinct values with the probability denoted by p sub x i so this i is greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to capital q minus 1 here now here the representation of p sub x i will be less than or equal to 1 as this is the probability it will always be less than that of the 100% i can say and the summation for i is equal to 0 to capital q minus 1 of this probability 
as discussed will be equal to 100% that it is 1 year so each possible value r sub x i is usually called as a symbol in general and the probability p sub x i of each symbol r sub x i can be estimated from the histogram of the signal histogram is plot of the information for how many number of times a certain value comes to the signal information versus the different gray levels if it is a concern of image or the signal representation with the help of particular bits here for coding purpose here so therefore if the signal will contain a total of capital n number of samples with m sub x i denoting the total number of sample taking the value of r sub x i we have this representation p sub x i is equal to m sub x i divided by capital n here so let us have the representation b sub x i to be the length of the ith code word that is the total number of bits necessary to represent the value of the random variable r sub x i so that time a measure of coding redundancy can be given by the average number of bits needed to represent each sample of the signal x of n so here we denote capital b sub x av av for the average that is equal to the summation i is equal to 0 to capital q minus 1 for the product of b sub x i with p sub x i in terms of bits here so as a result the total number of bits required to represent a signal can be capital n multiplied to this representation capital p sub x av here now along with this important two formulae let us discuss with respect to the entropy as it is very very essential parameter associated to the signal compression here see the goal or the objective of signal compression methodology is for reducing the volume of the data while at the same time there should be preserving the information quality next to the original signal with some acceptable fidelity also so the information content represented by a symbol can be informally related to its unexpectedness that is if a symbol arrives is one that we call expected and if an unexpected symbol will arrive it will convey much more information that it was not the case of the earlier so therefore the information content of a particular symbol can be related to its corresponding probability of occurrence so for the discrete time sequence x of n with samples taking one of capital q distinct symbols ri with the probability pi as shown the first equation here we have a measure of information content denoted by capital i sub x small i that is given as minus log to the base 2 of the probability p sub x i so from this representation it follows that the information content capital i sub x i is always greater than or equal to 0 and also it can be seen that the information content i sub x i is very large when we have the probability very very small so in short that it is the inverse relation between the probability and the information content here now a measure of the average information content of the signal x of n can be given by corresponding entropy which we have denoted by capital h sub x x x is the signal here so h x is equal to the summation i is equal to 0 to capital q minus 1 or product of probability p sub x i with the information content i sub x i so this is expressed as minus the summation or index variable i is equal to 0 to capital q minus 1 or p sub x i multiplied to log to the base 2 of p sub x i in terms of bits per symbol so this is the coding redundancy as we discuss the difference between the actual data rate and the entropy of the data stream here so this was our topic the signal compression